Okay, so in this video we're going to go over the main bones, the sutures, and the processes of the skull. Uh, in other videos we're going to go through all the foramina, and then in a separate video we'll do the uh, vertebral column. So to start off with, we have the frontal bone. Uh, most of these bones are going to be highlighted in green. Isolated so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. And now we'll move on to the parietal bone. Start with the left parietal bone. So lateral view, posterior. right parietal bone on the inside and kind of what it looks like relative to everything else From there, the occipital bone. Now to get to the occipital condyle, condyles are usually kind of round protuberances that articulate with other bones. The occipital condyle is going to articulate with the atlas. It's going to be that part right there. And kind of highlighted in magenta. Round, and the atlas would be right there. And this is the entire occipital bone. Posterior, inferior, All right, temporal bone, here's our left temporal bone. And our right temporal bone. to the mandible. We have a couple of important parts to point out here. The ramus is pretty much this entire part here. Highlighted in magenta. Left ramus, right ramus, lateral view. The angle of the mandible, which is on our list twice, you'll see it again under processes, is that angle right here in magenta. And the mandibular notch is going to be the surface on the inside between these two processes, which we'll get to. So mandibular notch, ramus, angle, mandible. Nasal bones.
left nasal bone and the right. These are pretty tiny bones. The zygomatic bone on the left. Notice where it um, ends and where the temporal bone kind of protrudes. This process here we'll get to later. Right zygomatic bone dips into the eye socket. Maxilla bone on the left and the right maxilla bone. They are a pair. You can see the nasal cavity in here. And also part of the eye socket. Sphenoid bone is also visible from the eye socket, but also from a lateral aspect. So if we view this anterior, uh, it's a pretty intricate bone. As you can see. And we're going to spend a lot of time here just because of all the foramina and fissures. Uh, but the important parts to know are the lesser wing at the top. So new denta, those are that's the uh, those are the lesser wing portions. And the greater wings at the bottom. And this is the posterior aspect, so this would be the back of the head here. This would be looking at the person dead on, anterior aspect, greater wing, and lesser wings. It's a superior view, interior is down here. The cella tersica is this kind of saddle. So this is a left lateral view. Anterior is here, posterior is here. Now we'll go superior view, anterior, posterior. And the pituitary gland sits right inside the cella tersica. It's pretty cool how it's like the perfect shape for that. The palatine bone, we're going to have to hunt. It's kind of deep in there. posterior to the maxilla. So that's the maxilla. Here's your palatine bone. This is the sphenoid bone. And it's a relatively small bone. You kind of get a sense for where it is. You can see that it kind of makes the nasal cavity area. The vomer is smack in the middle of the nose. It's a really thin one.
the lacrimal is also going to be in the eye socket. It's going to be this tiny one on the side of the maxilla here, the frontal bone here, and we'll get to the ethmoid bone soon. So I got another small bone. Okay, the ethmoid bone is that guy right there. You can kind of see part of it in the nasal cavity, but also the eye sockets. And we have two important parts here that we need to know. So before I show you that, let me just show it to you, isolated. So it's the anterior aspect, rotate, lateral, right. And this is the posterior aspect. And the parts we want to know are actually right up here. So this is a superior view, anterior, posterior. And here is the cribiform plate. have your olfactory bulbs there and olfactory nerves going through all these little holes. And then this kind of protuberance here is the Christogali. So those are the two to know of the ethmoid bone, the cribriform plate and the Christogali. Now we're going to move on to the sutures. These are pretty straightforward. Sutures are joints between bones. The coronal suture is at the top. Think of coronal slice. It's going to be, it's, uh, going to be between the frontal bone and the left and right parietal bones. You can actually highlight it. It is in magenta. The squamous suture will be between the temporal bone and the parietal bone. And it doesn't actually extend the whole way. This is actually a, a, a different suture. It's got a more specific name, things like sphenoid, squamous, but not on our list. So right there, squamous suture between temporal and parietal. Lambdoid suture between the parietal bones and the occipital bones. So it's the lambdoid suture. And the sagittal suture, I think sagittal plane, runs between the two parietal bones. That's our sagittal suture. So here's a good view. Coronal, sagittal, lambdoid, squamous. So from here, I'm going to skip the foramina, the fissures. Uh, and the meatus or meatai, and we're going to look at the processes. We'll start with the zygomatic arch, which is this entire part right here, and it actually composes the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, which is that right there. and what's known as the temporal process of the temporal, I'm sorry, of the zygomatic bone. So that's the temporal process, zygomatic bone, stuff right there, and the zygomatic process. So zygomatic process and temporal process are not on our list, 
what that whole joint area is, the zygomatic arch. The mastoid process is also part of the temporal bone, and it's this kind of rounder protuberance there. So there it is in magenta, mastoid process. The styloid process close by, also part of the temporal bone, is this pointy one. So styloid, mastoid, zygomatic arch. We're going to return to the mandible, look at these two processes. The anterior one is called the coronoid process of the mandible. And in the back we have the condylar process of the mandible. Here it'll say condyle, but for our purposes, make sure we write down condylar process of the mandible. the alveolar process of the mandible. And then I'll show you the alveolar process of the maxilla. Oops. So that's the left maxilla. And in magenta is the alveolar process. right along here. So these are your alveolar processes. Basilar process, we're going to have to go into the occipital bone on the inside. Maybe we can see it from the outside here. Kind of. So it's this part that kind of sticks out, but it'll be a lot easier to look at if we just isolate the occipital bone. process of the occipital bone. That's the occipital condyle. Back to the mandible. The angle of the mandible was right there. We saw it earlier. And then finally, we have the external occipital protuberance. So right back to the occipital bone. And it's actually going to be this kind of pointy sticking out area there. There it is highlighted in magenta for you. So this is a, a posterior view. All right, next video is uh, foramina and other miscellaneous holes.